Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this episode, we'll be reviewing the R7 pedals from the guys at SimGrade, sporting a different take on pedal ergonomics. When in use, they don't feel as different as you may think. They are a heavy set of pedals made from 4mm and 3mm thick stainless steel plate, and all input signals are handled by load cells in each pedal. Time to put them through the SRG's review process and see how they do. So, let's get to it. Let's take a closer look at these R7 pedals from SimGrade. First off, out of the box, this feels like a very substantial, heavy-duty, industrial-grade type of pedal. It's just engineered very, very well. A lot of thought has gone into this set of pedals, and you'll see that as this review goes on, especially when we get to the adjustments. It's just a nice, heavy-duty, you can pound on these things all day long, and they'll just probably hurt you more than you can hurt them. Now, they are very hefty as far as the weight goes, and that's another clue to their build quality. The throttle out of the box comes in at five pounds, six ounces, or 2.44 kilos. The brake comes in at seven pounds, one and a half ounces, or 3.21 kilos. And the clutch comes in a little bit heavier than the throttle at five pounds, 10 ounces, or 2.5 kilos. All stainless steel construction, they are very large. A couple of dimensions off of this. Now we know the weight. Let me go ahead and measure this. It's 300 millimeters high to this top of this pad here. Now this is adjustable. I actually go a little higher than that. But where it's sitting right now, 300 millimeters. So it's a tall pedal set. I'm going to use the throttle now for the rest of the dimensions. Let's go ahead and get these guys out of the way. And the flanges down here, we have some mounting slots in them. And they are... Well, the flange itself is 110 millimeters long. The centers on these slots come in at about 78 millimeters. And I'm trying to push this back to where I could imagine the center of an M6 bolt would be. And that looks to be about 83 millimeters maximum spread here. This flange was made to fit on a 40 series 120 piece of profile, the one that has the three channels in it. So it will fit across that perfectly. Uh, like a P1X has that on their pedal plate. I think I have a piece of that that's long enough that I can use it when I do the mounting, but yeah, we'll get there when we get there as far as that's concerned. Yeah, this is, the way these pedals work, it's very unique as you can see. The whole thing moves, including this paddle back here, called a paddle, but it's really a heel plate. Construction is four millimeter thick stainless here, all along this one piece, and this gives it its strength, obviously. This is all one piece, these two four millimeter stainless steel plates bolted together in different places obviously and it goes all the way down from here all the way down to underneath there you see it goes all the way down back here all one piece and then we have another major piece is this one here also four millimeters thick that goes down on, on the other side or the inside of our flange here and all the way to the front so two massive assemblies there and then everything else like these adjustment plates are three millimeters Anything else less than three millimeters is only one piece, and that's the plate right here. It's 1.5. And again, all stainless steel construction. Magnet won't stick to anything but the bolts. No plastic in this. The pads here are aluminum. But again, a very unique design here. So your foot's going to be resting here. I'll use my shoe. And as we action the pedal, you can see everything's moving at once. Not something that I'm used to on a pedal set, so I'm very curious how this is going to feel when I'm using it. And of course, all of them are doing the same thing when it comes to that part. The pivot points are all sealed bearings. If I can get a shot of that so you guys can see it. Down in here. All right. Remember, this is five pounds, so it's not the lightest pedal in the world. So right in there, you can see there's the main pivot bearing. And again, these are all sealed bearings. All, again, industrial quality, heavy-duty stuff, as you might imagine. That's the theme for what's going on here. We have some rod end connectors, and all the pedals have them to retain the springs or the bumper pack for the brakes, which you can also use a spring on the brakes. And these are obviously adjustable too. We can put them all through here. All the slots that are, have adjustments in them have notches in them, like this top plate here. Let me get my shoe out of the way. And you can see those notches in it. So that when we move this back and forth and secure it, it's not going anywhere. I really like the notch concept instead of just a smooth slot on both sides. It does take some of the micro adjustment out, but there's so many slots here, and it looks like it's probably 
Let's measure that real quick. From slot to slot, I've got four millimeters. So I doubt you could feel the difference between four millimeters when you're using your foot to press on this one where it's located. Maybe some could, but I don't think I could. Up and down adjustments, obviously, and we'll get to more adjustments once we get to that segment on these pedals. But this one's a little different. It has the notches in the back, but it's smooth on the front. Made for easy adjustment this way. And of course, we can adjust the pads individually down here, and they obviously have the same kind of thing. Now, one thing here, this one is smooth on the pad down here. There's no notches in these slots. So they didn't go with notches on those. Interesting. The center slot here has notches in it that we use to change the pivot point or the leverage point of the pedal. Right now I have it all the way down and it's very easy to push and it's a very simple thing. You don't have to tighten the nut down on this real hard. There's a rod end in there obviously. You can just pull this up and down and adjust that pressure pretty quickly like that. I'm just kind of Pulling up with my fingers. You hear it kind of notching. So as I go up, obviously, it's going to be harder to push. And now the front wants to pick up when I'm actioning the pedal. So I'm going to put that back down because I'm going to show you some other things. And I don't want to have to push on it that hard. Go ahead and get her down. So you can see how easy that is now to move. Okay, so what else am I going to talk about? I think on the that covers most of that part. Let's go underneath and see what's going on here. These are all load cell pedals. Again, as you might imagine, at this price point in this kind of build, there's the load cell there. You can see the white part of it down there. These are Mavin load cells. They have a unique adjustment capability down here also. I would not play with this at all, unless there was obviously a reason I needed to, because it's set, when they assemble these and they test them, they set them up the way they should be set up. So you don't want to mess with any of that unless there's, a, like I said, a very good reason. Now, it has a spring on it in here. You see this little spring down in here you guys the right angle on it there it is so when you action the pedal the spring is pulling or putting pressure on that plate that's bolted to the bottom of the load cell and that's how we get our input pretty cool and of course that's adjustable too if you want to move it back and forth or you needed to and we even have places up here so the spring can keep the same pulling angle on the load cell if we have to move it frontwards or backwards again just a ton of adjustability in this thing on the back, now you may have heard, or not heard, very quiet, huh? And the reason is they're using bumpers. We have one back here, and we have a felt. It's, it has a concave shape to it, see there? It's kind of resting in this machined in concave spot so that it makes contact with the bumper when we let it go. And the same thing is going on back here on the top part. So as this comes down, it's also going to contact that bumper. Very quiet. These are kind of pedals, you know, it kind of goes out of sorts here because usually the, the heavier duty or pedals, they're going to make some noise, but these are, yeah, pretty quiet. You can hear. You could use these and your significant other sitting in the same room reading as long as you, she couldn't hear the car noise or maybe the shifter noise or some of the other noises you might have going on. So yeah, that's very quiet set of pedals. They give you some extra felts so that you can change them out when you wear them out. Very good indeed. I think that's about it I want to cover on right now. We're going to get into the adjustment part and we'll cover a lot more there. Um, thing about the brake pedal, and we'll talk about the brake pedal. It is 120 kilograms. We'll say that much about it as far as maximum force on this pedal. And they have different ways of you achieving that. This brake pedal comes with in the kit what they call the advanced brake kit, which includes a preload spring that mounts not in place of the bumpers back here in conjunction with. So we would mount this puppy back here. I'm going to mount this back here like this and we put it in like that. So you'd have it sitting there like something like that. And then as you press the brake pedal down, it will give you a different feel for the preload, if you will. And it'll probably spring back a little bit more because it has spring tension versus the bumper tension. We also have, and this is not secured, so I had to be careful. I handle it. This piece here that fits on the back of the pedal and goes back here on the bottom. Something like that. Let's see, back in here like that. There's two holes there that you can see these rod ends will bolt into those threaded holes right in front of them. And this is a load reliever on the load cell itself when we're actioning the brake. And what that does is it allows us to push harder on the brake pedal, but not put more pressure on the load cell itself. 
So you're not overloading the load cell. 120 kilograms, again, is what the instructions say for the maximum on this, which is a lot of force for a brake pedal. I don't think I would want that much on mine and drive a long stint that way. But these pieces come so you can, again, as part of tuning the brake pedal itself. And the brake pedal also comes with these springs. So if you wanted to go to a spring brake feel, you could. Blue is the lightest and yellow is the heaviest as far as stiffness goes. The clutch pedal over here has a spring in it and that's how it works. And the only really difference is this plate right here that we can adjust this if we want to for the clutch pedal feel. We can also adjust these down in here. Like I said, adjustments are everywhere. So yeah, the spring itself, they give us some extra springs for that. It has the yellow, which is the hardest spring. They also give us a red and a blue spring in case you wanted to make the clutch pedal feel a little different or lighter. We'll see once we get it underfoot. Lots of parts here. We've got different durometers for the stops that you just saw on the throttle pedal down there. Mainly for use, I believe, on the clutch or the brake, but we'll get to that when we get there. We get lots of hardware bits. We've got T-nuts. <laughs> My bag popped open here. We've got some T-nuts over here. Well, I might as well use this too to show you what that's for. And some bolts to, and washers and things to secure your pedals to the profile. It comes with the kit. Nice. A 40 series T-nuts, by the way. We also have a bunch of bolts and washers and spacers. And these are used for tuning the length of the stack that you have. So if you put a, a shorter stack on the brake pedal, you'll need to put shorter bolts or longer bolts, depending on which way you're going. And again, washers also to support them. But it, we'll get to that once we get to the adjustments. We also get some other stuff like a ground wire and some 40 series T-nuts, a couple of bolts in here that we can bolt down our controller box. And what else am I gonna show you? Bumpers, of course. We've got some really hard ones here, I believe. And then we have these softer ones here. And we get a pack of them in this bag. And in this bag, yeah, it's, it's pretty soft. You can see how I can squeeze it there. So this is for what they call a road car feel. We get a USB cable, nothing fancy here. Just a USB to USB-B cable, or USB-A rather, to a USB-B. Get it right, Barry. And we have some friction pads here, these self-adhesive deals that will go on to the pedal faces if you use them. Typically, I don't use these because they're so hard on my shoes, and I you know, usually don't need them. We get some extra felts, so we can replace the felts that you saw that keep everything quiet. And we get this, well, before we get there, we get a long bolt here. In this long bolt, they know that when you pull this brake pedal apart, this stuff's going to want to go flying. And we've got some washers in here inside the, well, well you can see it under the lights here, but hear that? <laughs> That's got some washers in there that keep these from expanding too much when you're putting full pressure on them. So it'll kind of bottom out before it bottoms out on the bumper itself. Now, when all that stuff comes out and we're changing the bumpers, you could have a huge mess, but if they give you this bolt here, and this bolt is, looks like an M6. It's the same diameter as the rod back there. And we can just kind of, when we slide this off, we can slide everything onto here. I think that's, that's the idea anyway. We'll see there how it works when we get there. And we also have a magnet that can hold our washers when we need to. So they actually put a magnet in the kit. Interesting. So we'll see if we have to use that when we get there. The controller box itself, it looks like to be like a three printed housing here because of the lines here. Oh, well, that's going to show up. It's got some lines going that way. Yeah, it looks like it's 3D printed, but it doesn't feel like PLA. It doesn't feel like PETG. Maybe it is. It almost feels like it's nylon printed. But yeah, we've got our clutch, brake, and throttle connectors here. We have our USB-B over here that we're going to connect to. And we have this other little port, our little hole here. And that has a screw and a metal piece in it. Looks like a nut maybe. And that's for the ground wire that I just showed you. In case we need to ground it, we can run this ground wire from there, which is also connected to the ground circuit and the circuit board that's in here. And then we can connect it to one of the pedals if you have an EMI problems. Well, it's nice that they actually put something in there to try to help you out with that. Anything else? Well, we got a sticker and that's it. Now, this pedal set comes with a very comprehensive and detailed user manual that will cover just about everything. And I'm going to be using it because there's so much you can do with these pedals. 
anything you could want to know about the pedals. It's not that confusing. You do have to read it to get the gist of what they're talking about, but it has a lot of graphical pictures in it and things trying to explain exactly what they're talking about and how to properly adjust these pedals, which we're going to get to next. Now I'm going to go over the throttle pedals adjustments. I'm also going to use the throttle pedal for the common adjustments that are available in all three pedals because, well, they're basically the same as far as ergonomic adjustments go. A lot of adjustments available in these pedals, and you'll see that as we go along. I'm going to start at the top because I guess that's the best place to start. Kind of work my way down. First, we've got three adjustments up here. We have, you can go forward like this. You can go backwards like that. So if my shoe is sitting up here, I can adjust for the angle really that I want on the shoe. So I can push this back to give me more angle back. Of course, there is an adjustment down there, and we'll get to it as far as the angle of the lever itself. So we can fine tune it once we get that where we want it. Then we can adjust these pads where we want. Again, I can come way out here. I can go straight down or up if I want to. And once I get this situated where I want it to be, I need to pull back up here, get my shoe out of the way. Once I get this where I want it, and I tighten this down, I still have some micro adjustability on the angle right here. So if I can't quite get it right here, I can still get some tilt out of this pedal face. So yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of adjustment. Now, I'm just gonna kinda go down the bottom of the lever as we work my way down, and this is the stop adjustment back here. Remember we have this felt pad in here that makes contact with this, oh, I think I got this thing too stiff now. It makes contact like that. And this is a stop for that, so I can adjust this up or down. And it's in a slot, and yeah, this up or down. Pretty simple stuff there as far as that adjustment goes. We also have the adjustment for this piece here, which is the rod end. It goes into the big curve with the teeth in it. And we can adjust that as far as leverage on the spring assembly. When it's further down like this, we have more leverage on it, so I could push this down. And it stays where it is too, by the way, being that loose, so it's pretty easy to get an adjustment and then start working it. So it'll stay right there. It won't ever move. Now, if you get it to exactly where you want it, you may want to cinch it tight down tight again, depending on how hard you are on a throttle pedal. <laughs> if you're doing heel and toe and smacking it around, you might want to do that. I don't know. So we have that. Now we have this guy. And this supports the bottom of your shoe. Again, I'll put the shoe up here. You can see it kind of fits that. So you can push this in or out. You can push your shoe. That would increase your, your angle. And it also increase where we're supporting the bottom of that foot there. This comes way up here if you want. Now, I was thinking that if I was going to do heel and toe, this... Apparently this is not really set up for heel and toe because if it's down here, then I'm trying to, you know, my brake pedal's over here and I'm kind of reaching over trying to smack it. And this is going to be too high. So I can actually raise this up like that. And now I'll have somewhere to smack the throttle. At least that's my theory. <laughs> we'll have to see once I get it on how that bears out. And I spoke with SimGrade briefly and they said the original idea was a two pedal set for this. So they really didn't have a thing intentionally engineered into this for heel and toe. But I think this would work. But there's only one way to find out. But again, same thing here. We've got a lot of adjustability. I can come out. I can go back in, obviously. I can come in. We have a lot of different angles that we can adjust here. Once I get my angle right here, again, a micro adjustment in the pedal face itself. So I can actually twist that back and forth to get the angle micro adjusted in exactly where I want it. Yeah, this is so much adjustment in this. There are three spacers in between here, 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 and here when you adjust that. And we have, again, just like we have on the top up there, we have two M10 Nylock nuts back here, and we have the M5 socket head caps here. And here we have socket head caps on both sides. Where are the nuts? Are there threads? No, they're actually nuts. I'll show you. If I can get it pull this out so you guys can get a look at it here. There's a nylock nut in there in the molded part. See it right there? Right in there. So that captures the nylock nut so it doesn't move. So it's almost like having a threaded hole in there. Again, this is so well engineered. Little bits like that are telltale signs to me. Yeah, on the drawing board, these guys really thought this through. Yeah, I like little, little bits like that make the difference to me anyway. Maybe not to you. So, what else can we adjust? 
I'm not going to pull this out and adjust it because it's pretty simple what's going on here. This is a carriage bolt, by the way. I will say, talk a little bit about that. These are carriage bolts that they're using here. See these little round flat pieces in here? The light on it there. There we go. There's gas right there. So they are smooth on top, as you can see, very smooth. But around the shank, right under that head, there's a square piece. It's obviously machined into it or manufactured into the bolt itself that fits that square hole. So once you put that in, the idea is once you put this into the square hole and you put a nut on it and you're all you got to do is put finger pressure on the other side while you're tightening it down. It won't go anywhere. And finally, you'll be able to tighten it down very tightly because of that square piece is stuck in there. Kind of like capturing a regular nut, just a different way to do it. There was a nut on the other side. So that, I'm not going to mess with as far as adjustments. Of course, we do have some preload here. Plastic wheel that allows us to just, typically it will see on a lot of pedal sets or springs that you want to do preload on. So that has a thumb wheel there that's plastic and then we just come in and lock it down with our let's go the right way Barry we come down there and lock that down you can see there's some washers in between there and again that's how you adjust the feel of it along with everything else now the adjustment for the angle is, is probably the most complicated and finicky if you will fiddly that there is on this pedal the pr only reason that is, is because there's a spacer in here. See a spacer between our flange plate here for mounting and over here. Now there's a threaded hole in that plate on the other side. So to move the angle of this pedal, you've got to pull these out. Let's pull this one out. And when you do that, that spacer is going to want to fall out, isn't it? So as you back this out, this could work for you. Now this is easy to take care of when you're on the bench. But when you have this pedal mounted, just like this, on your pedals, or rather on your pedal tray, and it's mounted and you're using it already, to change the angle can be a little bit problematic. So what I'm going to do is take this hex wrench that they put in the kit here, because it's handy. I'm going to get up underneath here and stick it in the hole as I'm back in the screw out. That's the idea anyway. I don't know how well this is going to work. It's going to be fiddly regardless what I do here. Okay, now I've got the bolt out. I stuck the Allen wrench through that spacer so it won't fall out. See, the spacer didn't fall out. Pretty cool, huh? And there's the bolt with a couple of washers on it. So the only problem is now I've got to go to the other side and do the same thing. It's going to be a little problematic when I do that because, again, I'm going to try to do this like I had it mounted to the regular brake. So I'm going to take this out. I've already got it loose so I don't have to wrench it out for you. I'm going to try to capture that spacer with another one of these wrenches they give us. So I'm going to kind of put it in there, in the hole as I'm back in the bolt, just like I did the other one. And see how this is going to work. I guarantee I'm going to drop one of these, though. <laughs> I know I'm going to drop one. All right, so I'm backing it out, and I'm also pushing in with the Allen wrench, and there we go. All right, so far so good, right? But if you look at these holes, they are they're not slots, really. They're actually holes which are a good thing because there's going to be a lot of pressure on that point of the pedal when you're pushing on it. So a slot was, is not as good as a regular hole, just a series of holes drilled in there. So now i got my spacers captured. I should be able to move. I think this Allen wrench might be too big, though. And what I would do was, obviously, these would be bolted down. I would try to go up or down, whichever way I wanted to go. Let's say I wanted to go up. I'll pull up on this. And it looks like this Allen wrench wants to hang. This other one on the other side is a small one, though, so it's not. It's coming right through the little groove in the middle there. This one wants to hang, so I'm going to pull it out just a little bit. And I lost my spacer. <laughs> so I tried, but I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't quite get it done. So now I have to pull this up to where I want it to be, all the way to the top. Now, that's another thing. There's really no stop in this system, so I have to look down and find out where my hole is. I'm going to kind of tilt it a little bit, but I couldn't do this if it was bolted down, right? I'd have to be trying to figure out where it is. I could just go ahead and take my bolt and stick it on the top one and look where it is and get that part of it lined up. That's probably what, how I would do this. Then I would come back with my spacer that has fallen down here. Here's our spacer. Steel spacer, by the way. Very nice. I wonder if this is... Yeah, that's steel. It's not, that's not stainless steel. I want to check. <laughs> All right, so now 
I'll do this. Instead of messing with this, this is what I'd be doing if it was on my pedal set. I would be taking these needle nose pliers like that and grab these. And of course, it's still a little finicky because when you squeeze, it wants to shoot out the end. So you got to kind of keep the constant pressure on it, but don't squeeze it too tight. Not too difficult. But then I would come down like this and I would put my bolt, have it at the ready, slide this down, and then put it in the spacer like that. Bingo. See how that worked? And now I can come back in with this. Now that spacer's captured again, but now I'm going to need to go over here on this side and do the same thing. And guess what? My Allen wrench just fell out and lost my spacer. But it's not that bad of a deal. Again, I'll just capture this. First, I'll make sure my bolt is lined up in the hole properly with the threaded part. Because the last thing I want to do is have that spacer in here and fishing around for the hole. So make sure that's lined up first. And again, not that difficult, but it is the most finicky part of the adjustment, the angle adjustment. And that holds true with any of these pedals. And I think that, yeah, they all have the same angle adjustment. I haven't been over messing with those yet, so I had to look. So again, I'm going to kind of hold this down here, get my bolt ready, slide it down in between there. And when it gets to where my bolt is, I should be able to get in there. There we go. Now the bolt's holding it. Don't have to worry about it anymore. I've already lined up my hole before I even tried that trick. So I'm good to go. And there it is. Wasn't that difficult, but again, like I said, a bit fiddly. Really the only fiddly bit around here on this pedal set as far as adjustments goes is that part. The rest of them are pretty straightforward. All you need is a 10 or 8 millimeter wrench for your nylock nuts. And of course, the M5 and M4. I meant to mention that. This back one here with the bumper adjust up and down. This is an M4 metric size. And then on the other side, the nylock nut is an 8 mil. So I got my 8 mil wrench here. And I would just go ahead and adjust that. Then tighten everything down exactly where I need it to be. And I believe that is it. Yeah, that's all the adjustments we have. That's not enough. So like I said, this is the most adjustable pedal set I've ever had in the SRG. I'm thinking there's not, yeah, there's nothing else here. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything here. And of course, when we get to the brake pedal, there'll be a whole slew of adjustments for the bumpers. And I'm going to put the advanced brake kit on. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and put that on because it's easy to put on. I might show it first how it's going on. Then I'll put it on and come back because I don't want to spend a lot of time watch, you watching me wrench things. That's just waste time on video. So, yeah, I don't know about you guys, but there's a heck of a lot of adjustability in this. So I would imagine most anyone who is a normal type of human being would be able to find something that is very ergonomic and be able to dial it in to where you're very comfortable when using the pedals. And again, this is a, a different concept than most pedals, and they engineered it that way so that you've got this support under the heel here and on the toe. Instead of traditionally, we wouldn't have that. This would be like this, and there would be no support down here. Again, it might be something you have to get used to. I'm not sure, but I won't know until I get them bolted down and we're actually using them. So we'll get to the brake pedal next. Now we're going to go over the brake pedal adjustments. Now the ergonomic parts of the adjustments are just like we saw. If you watch the segment on the throttle, as far as adjustments for the throttle, I went through all of that. So if you didn't go back to the throttle, then you'll see how all that works. We're going to talk about the stack, elastomer stack, and what we can do as far as the resistance on the pedal without using the advanced brake kit. We'll talk about that later. First off, you'll see that there are four bumpers in here and that's how it comes default or at least it came to me in the default configuration and that's what they call the GT configuration. Now there's some washers in here too and you're probably not going to be able to see them well because of the studio lights but there's some washers in there. You can hear them jiggling around. My mic is picking that up and that's to keep these bumpers so when we press on them for bulging out too much they do bulge when you press them down and if they bulge out too much it gets into you lose the feel for the pressure on it they just they go beyond where they're supposed to provide the pressure that you want to feel underfoot so to keep them from deforming that much they've got these washers internal and we'll see that a little bit more once we get this apart that this can only compress so far because the washers are going to keep it from they're going to stop it so it's not going to go, it can't compress all the way down between 
these two plastic bushings here and press them together completely like a sandwich, like a peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> so these thought washers in here are going to stop that from happening rather. Okay. So first thing is, how do you change this stuff? Well, we, the whole deal that you're going to be focusing on here is this right here. These rod ends on both sides and the spacer stack that we have in here determine the preload on this pedal. If I've got too much preload, it's too stiff right now, then I would put some shims in here. And then the bolts would obviously not go in quite as far. If I put shims in there, it would make the reach longer so it wouldn't clamp as tight. And that's how the preload would be adjusted. There's no preload adjustment up here, unless you want to put some more washers on top of this piece here, this plastic piece. You could put some more washers in there, but then you got to take the whole stack out anyway. And yeah, probably just easier to use this. It's a bit of a complicated fiddly system, to be quite honest, when I first saw it. But on the other hand, from an engineering perspective, it gives you like infinity for the adjustments on the preload and how this thing feels without even going to the advanced pedal kit or the advanced brake pedal kit that we're going to see in another segment. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and cut to the chase. We're going to take this apart. And this is the default setting it came in. And I'm going to show you a picture here out of the manual. The manual is very good here. This is going to save you the manual on how you're going to implement the solution. So all you got to do is very carefully. Remember, we've got a lot of hardware in here. So when we start taking this apart, chances of all these little washers going crazy, and there's five in each one of these. That's 20 washers just there. And we have this stack over here that has the spacers and things in it. And a washer there. Or a shim. It's really acting like a shim. So, yeah, how do we keep that from happening? Well, they were kind enough to send us this long M6 bolt. It has a smooth shank on it, as you can see, until it gets to the very end where the threads are. And the idea is to slide everything onto this when we take it apart. And we're going to do that. So go ahead and get this out of the way. Now, also, one thing I didn't want to show you on the brake, even though the throttle is the same thing, get this cord out of the way so you can see what's going on, is the rod end up here that also is an adjustment for how this pedal is going to feel. Obviously, if we go all the way up here, it's going to take more force to push on it than if it was down there. And there's also a clearance issue you want to consider back here because the further we go up, and I'm just going to do just like I did on the throttle, I'm going to pull this up just by pushing, pulling up, hooking on. I'm just going to hook on these two bolts on either side of the rod end. See them there? And you'll hear it ratcheting through those teeth in that slot. So let's try that. That's a little tight. <laughs> So I've got the, the way the stock preload is, it's pretty tight, but you can see it clicks. One thing is you can adjust it quickly and with being that tight, yeah, you can just go use it and see how it feels and don't worry about tightening this back down. Now maybe when you get your final settings, you might want to tighten that, those two bolts back down so to guarantee it's never going to move on you. So the way the preload is on this now is pretty tight because I can feel that when I'm trying to move this. The bolt is already loose on the rod end here, where it goes through the rod end ballpark. There we go. But as I click this, and it goes up in here, this points downwards. So eventually, there's going to be a point. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? Let me loosen these M6 bolts here. Just a hair. And loosening that is like loosening the preload. But I would have to go in and put shims in here to compensate for that looseness. I'm just going to loosen up a little bit, and it's going to make it easier for me to do what I'm trying to show you here. Just a little bit there. A little bit. There we go. So, I loosen the preload. See that? See how they're loose now? The spacers are loose. But you don't want to have it like that when you're using it. You're going to have to go in and put some shims in there, and we'll look at the shims in a little bit, to take up that space. You have to take the bolt out, put the shims on, put it back in. But it's not so bad if you just do one at a time. One will stay in, keep everything nice where it's supposed to be from flying around. And then, yeah, you just do one at a time. So not too bad, but still much more complicated than other systems I've seen. But then again, it has a, a finite adjustment capability that nothing else I've seen has. Again, it depends on your perspective, right? Engineering, or I just want it to be simple, easy, quick, and not have to mess with anything. Depends on who you are. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead... And see if I, that took some pressure off of it. It should have. Yeah, see how easy it is now? Now, again, I'm going to demonstrate, exaggerate a little bit the way this is going. 
and you'll see this part pivoting down into the air back here. Of course, you're probably not going to run the pedal with it way up there, <laughs> but it's just a demonstration to show you that you need some space behind this system here, especially once we put the preload or the load cell uh, helper, if you will, it takes the pressure off the load cell when we're pressing on the pedal. That hangs down even under, underneath here even more. But remember, this pedal was designed, let me go ahead and push it back forward. This pedal was designed to be mounted to a 4120 profile or maybe 240 profiles, two separate pieces, because a 4080 won't fit because of the spacing here is not compatible with that. But it is compatible with a 120 or two separate 40 series. Or you can just mount it flat to something. But because of that design, you would have it mounted to something, a profile like that, there would be room or air underneath. But if you had something flat like this you were mounted to, that would be a concern. But, you know, I don't think many people are going to be running at such an angle that it would interfere with that. But once we put that load cell helper on, and this thing here hanging off the back, underneath this, then yeah, you can see right away, it could be an issue, right? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and further loosen this. And I'm going to pull one of these out at a time so I can show you what's going on here. Let's, uh, let me push this back down so I get a better angle. If I can. There we go. I'm going to take this one loose over here. And again, that's a M5 or 5 millimeter wrench. And as I do this, this rod end is going to disengage. I'm going to kind of support a little bit underneath. Make sure nothing goes flying anywhere. And there we go. Now it's loose. And I'm going to pull those spacers stack that I have on there now. As I'm pulling the bolt out very carefully, I lost one of them. So here's the stack that was on there by default. And I'll show you that picture again. It shows you exactly the same thing. So this is what it looks like in real life. So we have that black washer there, which is about two millimeters. Then we have the other piece it is two millimeter. I guess maybe that's a millimeter and a half. Yeah. So that's two millimeters, a little silver piece there. And when it's trying to fall out is six millimeters. And the one in front of it is 10 millimeters. So that's the stack that we had for our preload. The bolt itself has got a washer on it on the other end, which doesn't affect the preload at all, obviously, because it's pushing on the other side. I want to put those back together like that. Set this aside. And then I'm going to take the other one off. But when I do that, I'm going to have to hold this up, the back plate here, or all this is going to want to come rolling off of here. And remember, there's a bunch of washers in there, so that would not be a very good situation. It would be a very big old mess. So I'm going to carefully take this one off the same way I did that one previously. You can see it's falling now because I've disengaged from the other rod end. Everything is loose. So now I'm going to do two things. I'm going to use this finger to hold the plate. I'm going to pull my spacers off so they don't go flying everywhere little dance here. Okay. So we already saw that stack. I'm going to put it over here. I'm pull my bolt loose while I'm still keeping pressure on this plate. Now, a couple things I can do here. I can just pull this plate off. And we'll take a look at it. And that is the preload plate and the plate that takes all the pressure. Then I'm going to take this bolt they gave us to help. <laughs> now, let's see if I can do this. So what we're going to do, the idea is to put the bolt here on the end of the shaft here, the rod that's supporting all this, and just slide everything onto it. So let's see if that works. Washers and all that are inside. I'm going to go ahead and push it from the top here. Got to get it started. Yeah, this can be a little tricky. Imagine if this was already mounted to your rig, right? Your pedal tray, and you're doing this. Just imagine. <laughs> So yeah, I'm just going to, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to try to get my right hand over here to help me out. So far, we've made it. So far, we're good. And yes, he did it. So this is what I would end up with. This guy here. And there's our stack. And this also allows me to show you the washers that are inside. And again, that are an over-compression guard, if you will. Keeps things from compressing too much. If I pull this off, there's the, the washers, and the washers are the right diameter to fit inside that bumper. Pretty simple, really. If you look at the configuration, it says you can do 5 to 7. It looks like it's coming from the factory, 
with five one there. So we have five washers on here. Of course, that just fits back over like that. And this bolt is holding this bottom plate on that protruded like that when we had this plate on here. Okay, let me get my plate back off. So if I wanted to change what I'm doing here as far as the bumpers, let's say I want to go to an F1, or I want to go to the road car configuration or something in between. Remember, we can mix and match to our heart's desire, just like any other elastomer or bumper stack. And we've got these guys over here. Let me set this over here so it doesn't go anywhere. This would be the F1 configuration, two of these. If I just wanted to go to an F1, I could mix this with those guys over there, the ones that we just took off. And it would give me a different feel. These are very solid, though. You can hear them almost like hard plastic. They don't press at all when I press them. And we go to the other extreme over here, and we get three of those. And we have this one here, which is, I believe this is in millimeters thick. But you can see how rubbery this one is. And this is the road car one. And I'm going to show you a picture of the road car. And it has these five, 10 millimeters. And you can put in the washer limit here. If you read this, it explains it pretty well, actually. If you read this, it says that the maximum and minimum washers is three to one. So one or three in on these guys in between them to keep them from compressing too much and squishing out on you. But it gives you an extra piece over here. Because if you notice, there's one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have an extra one of these to make that happen. All the parts are here, by the way. Everything is going to work perfectly. So I could do the road car. I could mix this because, let me get my stack back up here. I, you can see that one of these is almost, eh, maybe not. You could do two of these to one of these, but yeah, I think that's a little bit optimistic, Barry. I mean, you could. It's just a matter of space, right? And then we set our preload based on the length of our bolts and our spacers and our shims. Yeah. Like I said, this is a very <laughs> elaborate system that will allow you to tune just about anything you want. And I'm going to use the GT. I'm not going to use these. I might tune this later on. But I do want to show you the spring setup too. And we have three springs here. So if we don't want to use the F1, we can go down to the spring. And the spring is a different setup. I'll show you a picture of it. If I get it there. There we go. So we have the blue, the red, and the yellow spring. And I can actually go in and set this up to do that. And they have all the parts we need to do that. But if you notice, what I want you to notice here is the rod ends. If you look in the picture, there's nothing there. And I'll show you here. So there'd be no spacers. There would just be this rod end and the plate hitting the bottom of it. Maybe some shim for preload. Maybe if you want to mess around with that. But that would be it. So very short, as you might imagine, because we don't have to use a longer bolt. We don't have to use spacers that we had in the other one. It's all relative, really. And the cool thing is they do give you the list on the bolt you're supposed to be using, the spacers, and any other advisory notes that you would need when you're trying to tune it or put it together to where you would want it to be. I do like the manual. In fact, I would be lost looking at all this stuff if it wasn't for that manual. So we can do the springs, too. Or we can go to F1, which is very stiff, 120 kilograms pressure, I believe is what they're saying for that. We'll take a quick look at that picture for the F1. There it is. Yeah. So just the two of those with minimum spacer. I think we've got a black washer there that's one and a half. And then we've got a six millimeter spacer. So not much going on there, right? As far as, and of course the bolt sizes are going to change too as we do this. Uh, the M6 bolt is going to go from a 25 or a 30 to a 25. I believe the 30 is what we took out. Let me measure that real quick. Here's the one we took out. Yeah, these are 30 millimeters long. Now we got a whole bunch of bolts over here that come that'll let us do this adjustment. There's a 25 mil. And we also have a 15 mil over here. Lots of bolts, lots of shims and washers. In fact, let me show you my pile of washers here. I don't want to drop anything. Here they are. Shims. Washers and shims. And I wanted to show you this because there's a pretty good difference here between them. Get this one off of here. Yeah, this is like a half a millimeter, it looks like. And one of the thicker ones is going to be, I believe that's a two millimeter. So here's the differences. And everything in between 
is what we can use here. And this is what we adjust the preload with. You saw when I was taking this off, I had to loosen them up. That's why I showed you that. To move this, you know what that does, essentially, as I bring that plate further away from the stack, it makes it looser. It's not as much pressure pushing on the stack. And you have to use shims to do that because we can't have it just flopping around like I showed you before, those spacers flopping around. It's just not the way this is done. Be advised of that. So if I wanted to keep it at that preload setting, then I, again, like I said before, I had to pull one of those bolts out. I have to pick out the right width shim that I wanted and stick that in there and then put the bolt back in with all the existing shims and spacers that I had to back that out. As long as the bolt is long enough to still grab the threads on the rod end here. <laughs> it sounds a little bit more complicated or probably maybe a lot more complicated than it really is. With the instructions they give you, I think it's pretty easy to see what's going on. But it is complicated. It is fiddly. It's not something that, again, a quick change is going to happen here. You have to purposely do what you want to do. But the range of adjustment, because of the way this is working, is very, very large. And I imagine for those who want to really tweak their brake pedal to get the feel just exactly where they want it, I mean, by the half a millimeter or millimeter, then, yeah, this is, well, it's the way to go. This is engineering here. <laughs> Some people might say over-engineering, but, yeah, that's the way it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay with the GT because that's typically the kind of pressures I use in a brake pedal. And I'm going to go with that first. I might change it around later on, but, again, this is something you could go on for weeks trying to tune a brake pedal. And I've done that where I've got tried a lot of different settings on a pedal and finally got it to where I liked it. And some I just couldn't get there. It's a very sensitive thing, and it's very subjective from person to person to get that. What I really want, my objective anyway, is get to that feel of hard braking into the threshold, not stomping on them, but a very quick, even pressure as hard as I can push in the threshold, and then start coming off of that as I begin to want the car to rotate and do my start my turn in. Then we want to get off of that and get into our trail braking stage of the braking section there and come off of it so that I can bring some weight off those front tires and get more grip into them to where they can actually turn without sliding down the road. And then I've got a condition of uh, understeer and it won't turn, right? So that's what it's all about. But to get that feeling, it's not as easy as some people might think, at least not for me. Maybe it's easy for some other people, but to get that feeling, to, I feel like I'm actually controlling what the car is doing. Once you get there, though, man, it's magic. You can really get consistent once you have it there. And I think with something like this, you can get there. It's not going to be easy, but you'll get there. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is put this back together just the way it came apart. In fact, I might put a little shim in here on the way back in just to lengthen it back out because I kind of like the way it felt in this part of it when I did that. So I might put like this one and a half millimeter shim in there and see how that works for me. See, I'm already thinking <laughs> what I can do here. <laughs> All right, so yeah. I want to put this back together and we come back, we'll talk about the advanced brake kit and the other pieces that you can put on here and what they do. I have the advanced brake kit installed now and those are three different components. We have the load cell limiter number one, they call this on the back here. And you can see it's another bumper or elastomer that is just like the four that's on this stack. And it's on the bottom here. It also has rod ends on it, just like everything else does. And we can preload this just like we talked about when we were talking about the preload on the brake. Speaking of which, if you look closely on that brake, I put another washer in there. Remember I was talking about that on the when I was when we pulled this stack out and I was putting it back in. I put another shim in there to give it a little less preload. And so far, I like that feel, but yeah, it's early days yet. <laughs> So this is how this is working. And I was telling you that you need some hangover on the bottom here because if you have this on here and just have it on a flat surface that extends, then you can see it's bumping here and obviously you're not going to be able to use it that way. If we hang it off the edge of the table here, or my bench, then you can see the flanges are sitting flat now and we have all this room under here that we can use. So for everything's free to flap around now and we can use it however we want to. And you can see I can move the stack around a little bit too because I put the shim in there and there's less preload on it. So we also have this spring. I'm going to show you a shot of that. 
preload spring and this is going to give us a different feel on just having the bumper stack over here this is going to push back in a different way than the bumpers can push back as far as their spring feel and this also when you're first pushing it can feel a little different too so either way and this is a pretty simple thing again we put some rod ends on here and we're not going to be using any spacers on these see that and the reason is we've got all the preload adjustment up here all we got to do is turn this piece here and we can adjust our preload up or down so and then we'll lock it down with this steel thumb nut or finger nut i call it on the top of that so we can lock it down it won't move but we don't need the preload adjustment in this part so it can just kind of hang there we did have to take the spacer out up here and it was this guy got two bolts on either way and of course it fit right in between our four millimeter stainless steel pieces there but we took that out so we could put the rod end on the other end of our preload spring in there now there's another one i'll show you something about that that is a piece that actually came on the brake pedal when i got it they call it the load cell limiter number two and that's this little plate right here see that plate and it has a bumper attached to it and we have another side of the plate over there now this has some adjustment to it this back piece here that the bumper is actually on that shaft there the bolt that's going through here there's a little bit of adjustment there you can see right there see the gap there's a slot there so i can move this up further if i want to so what happens here is when we're manipulating the brake this piece here this panel here this plate doesn't move well it doesn't move very much anyway it, it just kind of sits there and this is part of the piece back here that's getting pushed on see this piece runs all the way back here Okay, this will actually move up and down. So what happens is this will move up and hit this. And when it hits that, that means it can't move up anymore and it limits the pressure we can put on the load cell. As we push it forward, this bottom part obviously is going to go up, but that's not connected. This piece here is not connected. So this doesn't move, but all the rest of it does. This one moves and that one moves. So this will come up and hit this. Now, you can even fine tune that, set this down, with these bumpers. Right now the black is in there, but you can go with the red and the yellow. Red is the hardest and yellow is the medium, black is the softest. Or you can mix and match them just like you could anything else. So we can do that on the brake pedal to change that feel or how much of the load cell load we're taking off of the load cell when we're using that. So we have three different pieces here that are doing different things on the advanced kit. This preload does a different thing, but these two guys here, the one hanging down here with the bumper in it, and the one back here are specifically for taking off loads off the load cell itself in the geometry of this pedal. Very well engineered, very clever system, I think. There are some caveats, though, just like this piece here. you got to have some space under it, or it's, you just can't use it. I don't think I'm going to use this anyway. I might leave it on there, but I don't think I'm going to be pressing, honestly, hard enough on this brake pedal that I'm going to need to take that much load off the load cell. I'll probably leave this one in because it's really not doing anything at the moment. When I'm manipulating the pedal on the bench, it's not even hitting that. Although I could, again, take that slot there and push this bumper closer to the bumper there. I think this is probably what I would leave on and maybe take this off. Early days yet, I need to get it on the cockpit, get everything mounted, and start running it, and then I'll get a much better feel for what I like or what I think I need or what I don't think I need. So there it is. There's the advanced brake kit and the caveats therein. Pretty simple stuff, really. Not much to, to bother with. These went on pretty easy. It was a little fiddly to get the rod ends in here because of the spacer washers that we need in between that but again if you follow the configuration that's in the manual itself you shouldn't have too much trouble with this stuff because it all is pretty much self-explanatory just have to take your time and yeah just fiddle with it at the end of the day what we'll do next is yeah we'll take a look at the clutch
Let's take a look at the adjustments available in the clutch pedal. There's not a lot to adjust here, so this won't take very long. We have the rod end that is going back through the spring and the back plate here. That is attached to a bracket. You can see this bracket here. It has some holes in the back. You can actually take the rod end out and move it back and forth if you want. And play with that as far as what you think feels right. But if you move the rod end further back, obviously it's going to compress the spring more. So we'd have to come up further on this. And we have some room there. You can see there's a some threads on that rod that we can come back towards the rod this way. So we can move it back and give a different feel to what's going on with the pressure plate simulation that's involved in this pedal set. We also have these square holes here for our carriage bolts so we can reconfigure and put this lower. I can just actually go a little higher if I want here and the rest of them are lower. It feels pretty good where it is though so I think I'm going to leave it there. The stop has a long slot here. I have it all the way to the back because that's where I want it. It feels just feels right to me that way. Yeah. This feels right. And that's as long as it can go. Might even use a little bit more, but of course that's totally subjective. And I'm really not going to know until I get this thing mounted on my cockpit itself. We have it on the pedal tray and it's solidly mounted. These plates here also with the holes in it are attached to the long slot that has the teeth in it, just like on the rest of these pedals, so that we can loosen two bolts on each side. Those are four millimeter hex size heads on those. There's the other side, and we can move this up and down the slot. And of course, the higher I go in the slot, the harder it's going to be to push this, and the lower I go, the easier it's going to be. Not only that, but because we're taking the rod in when we raise or lower this, it's going to change the angle of the rod in inside of here as it goes up and down, which is going to change the way that this little swing arm set up here is working. I'm going to try to hold that down and action it. So you can see how that's pivoting upwards when I press the pedal. And that gives you that simulated feel of pushing through a pressure plate where you first get that spring resistance and then you push through it and then it becomes easier to hold the pedal if you need to hold it down. And then of course it springs back at you at a certain point when you release it like that. So you can feel that on the bench. You can probably feel this very good also when you're sitting in the cockpit and you're just manipulating the pedal and you're not really driving. But I've always found that these kind of systems that once I'm driving it and I'm doing heel and toe and I'm just kind of slapping at the pedal, that kind of disappears. But it does that in real cars too, depending on how heavy the clutch is, obviously, that you're using when you're doing heel and toe. So yeah, that's about it for the adjustments. Of course, we have the usual adjustments that are common to all three pedals, but you need to go to the throttle adjustment segment where I went over all of that if you want to see how that works, if you haven't seen it already. We do have different springs we can put in here, very similar to all the rest of the stuff. We take these bolts out of the back to change the springs. They have racers, and this is the factory spacer setup. Looks like we have the 6 mil and the 2 mil, and then we have a black washer down there. On the other side, we have a black washer 2 mil, and that looks to be the 10 mil. So it accommodates that bolt so it doesn't go too far up into our rod ends on either side. There is no shimming adjustment here like on the brake. The brake is the only one you do that in because of the preload adjustments you want to make on the whatever you're using, the springs or the elastomers, the bumpers, whatever. Yeah, that's what that is for. And we went over that in the brake adjustment segments if you want to go look at that, if you haven't. And yeah, we don't use that here because we've got preload here that we can adjust, right? So we don't need to play with all these washers and such. I have the red spring in there right now. It came with the yellow spring, which is the stiffest spring. And we have the blue spring, which is the lightest spring. And you can see the difference there pretty easily. One's definitely a lot thicker than the other. And these look a lot like valve springs. If you guys ever done any head work on cars, pulling the heads off, redoing the valves. So I might put the yellow one back. I couldn't use it on the bench because it's hard to hold these. But, and I wanted to show you this, this thing actioning, but yeah. I might go back to the yellow once I have this solidly bolted down to the pedal mount that I'll be using in my cockpit. So yeah, that's about it for the adjustments there, and you can play with that and get it where you want it to feel. Is I think there's a lot of adjustment available in here, like the theme for these pedals. They're very adjustable and very heavy duty, 
Yeah, these things are solid as a rock. I don't think you'll ever hurt one of these things, <laughs> even if you are doing a lot of healing too and slapping things around. So we'll go ahead and get to the next segment. Now we'll take a look inside of the controller box. It comes with the R7 pedals. And again, if you saw this in the closer look, it looks to be 3D printed, but maybe nylons or something. It's very stiff. Doesn't have much flex to it. PETG maybe. But it's yes, well defined and well printed. A lot of detail in this. So we're gonna take a quick look inside. And here's our circuit board. And because all these pedals are load cell pedals, we have three of these INA122 amplifier integrated circuits. And we're going to tune those with these trim pots for each pedal. So we got one here, here, and here. So they can dial in each load cell so it's within the range that it needs to be operating in. Very clean board here, as you can see. Yeah, you can't ask for much more than this when you open up your controller box and to see what's going on. And we have an STM32 chip here, so all of these pedals are operating at a true 12-bit resolution. And we have, you're not going to be able to see this, but it says a SIM grade pedals controller 2020 up in there. You might be able to see it. I don't know. See you know, my camera handles that. So yeah, and of course assorted capacitors and resistors we're normally going to see on a board. So yeah, very, very neatly done. <laughs> not much to see here. We have these RJ12 ports here that are the plugs that are terminated on the pedals themselves. And of course we have the labeling there so we get the right ones in the right socket. And it does matter which one you put in here. So you want to make sure you're breaking the brake because it's already been tuned to the different load cells. So if I put the brake load cell plug into the clutch or the throttle and press on the brake, chances are it's not going to register because <laughs> it's outside the parameters because it's a 200 kilogram load cell versus the lower kilogram. I'm, I couldn't read what was on there, but probably I'm thinking, you know, 25, 30 maybe. But in, regardless of that, different parameters for different load cells, obviously, and their ratings. So yeah, well done. Very professional. Yeah, I have no complaints about this. Now, this little lug here, it's a little metal standoff. It is connected down here to the ground plane in this circuit board. And it's got a little screw here. And remember, I showed you a ground cable that comes with this that they give you. It has a very small hole connector there. And we have a big Y here. So this is what you would use on the computer side or the side where the pedals are. In fact, this is cut out for a six millimeter screw or bolt. So you should be able to make sure I can keep my focus going here. So you should be able to use this anywhere on the pedal bases in here. That's what it's cut out for. So you'll be putting this piece in the box. Now you don't have to have the top off to do that. All you have to do is remove the screw from the top. Just take it out. Then you would slide this in the hole where it is and then put the screw back in. Tighten it back down, you're done. That's why they left this slot out there. Nice little design. Again, like everything here, everything is just very well engineered and thought out and designed. They've done a really good job with this. So anyway, not much to see there, but there's our look inside segment. Now we're going to take a look at how these fixed heel supports go onto the pedals. You get some brackets like this, and this comes with the pedals, part of the kit. And these, again, are all stainless steel bits here. And there's two ways to do this. You can just mount individual plates so that the idea here is obviously to get this out of the way. So when the pedal moves, now when our foot is on the pedal and we actuate it, everything moves. So our heel, everything goes, right? So if you don't want, if it feels like you don't like that, then you can put these pieces on top. And that's what this is for. There's two bolts down here for that. You can see they're sticking out here. And they have looked to be about 20, 25 millimeter spacers in there with some four millimeter hex pocket head cap bolts on both sides. And this is going to fit on here like this with these two holes to the front. 
like that. We just loosen those. This will slip right down in there. And I've already done one to show you. Very simple stuff, really. I didn't want to suffer you guys through that, me doing it. And you can see this one is now mounted. Only thing you have to be mindful of is you want the washer to be on the outside of the plate when you slide that plate in. Just push the washer up and then it'll, it'll slide in. No big deal there. So you can see now it's sitting up here. So now when I take the throttle wire out of the way, pinch anything, and I can actually put my hand here now where I couldn't before because it moved, and you can see that now when I do the throttle, this plate's not going to move. But the plate underneath is still moving. So if I can grab it and make it move, there it is. So you can see it's still moving there. Now also, because of the range of motion here, I didn't want this hitting the bottom because it will make a metallic noise when this taps the bottom here. So I did have to adjust my stop here for the throw by about five millimeters. It wasn't that far, but it would make a clanking noise if I didn't do that. So now it's as quiet as it was before. So you can do this individually and just mount the pedals like this, which I think I'm going to try for, well, actually, what I'm going to try first is without the mounts on it. I just want to see what it feels like. And I'm going to play with all this stuff. And if I think that it's not something that I like, then I'll put the mounts on and try them individually for each pedal. Or, once we have these two mounted on the other two pedals, we can come along with this plate. And it'll fit like this on top of them. And of course, we'll have three in here. And these slots here will take some screws and some nuts will be on the other sides. And of course, they'll go in these holes. And they do supply you with the hardware for this. And again, by the way, these are all stainless steel plate here. Three millimeter, very stiff. Got some mass to it. Like everything else here, just heavy duty stuff. They give you these guys. So we have some flanged button heads. They kind of got a built-in washer system there. And that's an M5, it looks like. Maybe an M6. That's M6. Then we have some now like nuts that we're going to use. So they give you these two. Those, they give you six of these, so that's plenty to make it happen. A little blue nylock piece in there. And we have some washers. Now because these already have a washer on them, kind of integrated in there as you can see, there's no real need for a washer under this. So I would put the washer on the other side in between the nylock nut like that and see if that fits okay. It might not. It might take up too much thread, but I don't think it will. In fact, let's go ahead and test that. How about that? Stick it through there. There we go. And there's a little bit of wiggle room here so you can get everything situated and get it trued up the way you want it to. And I'm just going to kind of look. Yeah, I got plenty of room under there, I think, for a washer and then the nut on top. And the only caveat here is because they're nylock, you want to make sure you have enough thread sticking up. So when we run that nylock, in fact, I'll go ahead and put a washer on there. And I'll put the nylock next to it. That'll give me a general idea. Oop. Lean on the washer a little bit. So I would say I got plenty of thread there to engage the nylock part of that nut. It's all good. No worries. All right. And so that's how this part would go on. I don't lose all my screws <laughs> or nuts. And that would give me one big platform that typically this is what we'll have on a pedal set, right? If you have a heel plate at all. And yeah, this is something that you can move around in. For heel and toe, I just don't know how this is going to work, just having this on here or having them individually moving like that. I'm interested to find out, though. <laughs> I can hardly wait. So yeah, I just want to show you how this bracket system works. In the driving segments, you may see this installed or not installed, depending on when I was actually doing the recording. But I'm going to try it all and see how it works so I can make comments on it one way or the other in my final thoughts. But yeah, that's the, what they're calling this, I call this a heel plate, but they're calling this their heel supports. So same thing, really. And yeah, again, I like what's going on here as far as the build quality. It's just right up the par with everything else that we've seen so far here with this R7 pedal set from SimGrade. So I have the R7 pedals now securely mounted to my cockpit's pedal base. We'll go around here and take a look at it. 
and I used two 4080 profiles here. I had a piece of 4120, which the manufacturer uses for their demonstration purposes, but I was able to do the same thing with this. I didn't want to cut my 120 down. It was too wide for my base situation here, the way I have it set up. So anyway, two 4080s or even two 40s would do it, but if you, you need to really mount these solidly as you can, and I put two 4080s in here to get my channels spacing right, so obviously we're fitting the mounting plate flange here. And I put a reinforcing piece back here on the back of the 4080 on both sides. This is a about a 7 mil thick plate, and I have one on the other side too. Very solid because I couldn't get, typically how I'll mount this is I'll have a corner bracket here, and I'll have a corner bracket on the other side of the 40 series, this one's gone. This one's still here, as you can see on both sides. Because of the spacing, I had to lose that. So I needed a way to reinforce it so it wouldn't move on me or try to make it move as little as possible when I'm pounding on these pedals. So anyway, it worked out. So yeah, it doesn't matter. You don't need a 120. You can mount it just about anything. But remember, you're going to have to have that clearance back here. As you can see, this stuff's going to be hanging down. And you can see I also took off the load cell limiter or that load cell helper, or whatever they call that thing, that, that takes the load off the load cell so you can push harder on the pedal and not overload the load cell. You can also see I have the controller box now mounted in the channel using the hardware they gave me, a couple of long, I think they're M3 screws, M4s, and the T-nuts fit in this 40 series perfectly. Everything's hooked up and working. And yeah, first impressions, obviously I've already been in this, messing around with it is the throttle and the brake and the clutch. It's a different feel, no doubt, because everything's moving now. I mean, typically we have a static plate that we have our heel resting on, and then we're attacking the pedals with the balls of our feet, right? So now, and nothing else is moving, so we're kind of stretching when our foot moves this way. I feel a stretch in my calf muscle when I'm doing that, and of course a little bit of stress on my ankle. This takes that away. Because when the foot's sitting on this, when you're pressing on it, you've got all this support now in the heel area where before you had none. It's kind of a, it's not strange feeling. It just feels like you're still doing the same thing. It doesn't feel alien or anything like that. It's just, it feels like you have more support now when you're doing it. And of course, I have to put some hours on these pedals to really get the final opinion of what these things feel like. But I have to say, initially, I like what I'm feeling, especially on the throttle. It feels like I can control the throttle a little easier or more precisely because the whole foot's moving. Again, I might change my mind later on, but right now, initial indications are pretty good. Brake pedal's very stiff. Typically, that's how I like it. It's not going to move that much, certainly not with my hand on it. It moves much more when, obviously, my foot and leg is involved. And I did come back here and change or mess with the preload a little bit on the brake. And I have to say, just like you saw on the bench, this is not an easy thing to do. Well, it's easy as far as the concept, but because you have all these spacers and washers that want to come flying off on you when you take this plate off, if you want to insert another washer or take one out or a spacer or you have to put a longer bolt in, whatever the case may be, you know, doing one at a side at a time definitely helps that. But you have to be mindful that, yeah, I've got a lot of room back here. I can push my equipment cart back. And that gives me a lot of room to maneuver back here. And I still dropped a washer. So I imagine if you had this in a cockpit that was that you don't have any room basically in the back to, to manipulate this, you would be better off just pulling the four bolts out, taking the pedal out and changing it on your bench or desk or whatever, and then putting it back in. I think that would be the best way. Again, that's fiddly. It is what it is. But on the other hand, you know, you get a, a, a way to finely tune more than you probably could any other way by using these spacers, the preload that you have on your stack here, if that's important to you and you want to fiddle with it, you can do just about anything up to, what, a millimeter? I think those washers are even half a millimeter. So yeah, if your foot's that sensitive, you can feel that. <laughs> All right. Now, of course, the spring part here is just a tensioning adjustment. That was easy to adjust. Just like over here at the clutch, when I was adjusting that, it's got the same thing, preloads up here with these little wheels and the thumb wheel and that steel here that we lock it down with so yeah that's pretty easy and speaking of the clutch 
it felt pretty good. It's got a little bit of spring to it. As you push, the spring gets harder. And as we get to the end, nothing. It just kind of holds there. And then, of course, it'll spring back as soon as I take any pressure off of it. Of course, like I said before, that's probably all going to go away once I'm in the cockpit and using it in anger. Another thing I want to mention here, I'm going to be doing heel and toe. I don't think these pedals were designed for heel and toe. In fact, when I first saw these pedals, it was just a two-pedal set for just two pedals, right? Brake and throttle. Left foot braking and right foot throttle. So there's a space in here. Typically where I would heel and toe, I'd have my shoe up here and I'd swing my heel out because that's how I do my heel and toe. I don't roll over onto the next pad, which you could do on this. No, no problem. That would be easier, I think, maybe. Anyway, so I don't have that here, but I found that when I'm practicing a little bit in the static position, not doing anything, that my foot was catching it right here, the, the heel part, and I was hitting it. But also, that if I swung it far enough, I could catch this too, this part of it. But yeah, I have to get in and figure that out. But I do like what I'm feeling so far. It's definitely different than anything I felt before when I'm using a pedal because of the whole swinging concept here. But it definitely supports your heel and the back of your foot very well. But I might still adjust this, obviously, in or out. But that's what's great about this. You can adjust this just about anywhere you want. Got it all mounted. And this is the configuration I'll be running for the heel and toe. And I'll be able to slide this over when I go to just the regular right side throttle and left foot braking. And I have plenty of room over here to slide these over and get plenty of spacing between the pedals, I think. I'll be running this SimuCube Sport wheelbase and a Phoenix Racing wheel. We'll be using the ProSim shifter. And I will have no motion on because I want you guys to be able to see what the pedals look like when I'm using them without motion moving all around at the same time. Yeah, very heavy duty set of pedals. When you're in the seat pressing on them, yeah, there's, there's no indication or concept of weakness in these pedals. They're very stout, which I like in a pedal set. So what we'll do next, actually I'm gonna get in and show the little app that comes with this so you can adjust your dead zones. And then of course we're gonna get in and do some driving. Now we're looking at the SimGrade pedal tuning utility a small applet that comes with your pedals. Really what this is for is tuning your dead zones, but you also have a screen here that you can tune some curves if you're into that kind of thing. So we're gonna look at the dead zone first. You can see my pedals are working here as I push the clutch down, it's going all the way up. I do the throttle, it's going all the way up there. And if I take the brake and press it, it's not going all the way up. That's about as hard as I'm going to be pressing it. So, yeah. But I'm going to put some dead zones in so that my games, when I use them, will see all of this. Except for maybe eye racing. I think it calibrates in its own loop. So we'll see how that works when we get there, though. So we'll go to the clutch first, and I'll press on that. And you can see I got a ways to go before I hit that purple line up there. And that's when you can see it's engaging, right? What I'm going to do is bring that purple line all the way down here and just get it above it. So it's, you see the clutch in the purple on the other side, on the right side, the purple is bumping a little bit. And I don't want it to do that. Still doing it, so let me get it up a little. There we go. So now the clutch is gone. And you can see there I've got it, when I press it all the way down, First off, it engages as soon as I touch the clutch pedal now. And it goes past the purple line on the top there. I'm going to take that, press it down, and push that all the way up to the top so it stays within that range. Okay, so it's actually going a little bit past that. So that's my upper dead zone. I'm going to leave that like that because it is the clutch pedal I'm not worried about. It being a little bit over when I'm pressing it different ways. Because when I'm going to do heel and toe, yeah, it's going to, uh, I'm just going to be slapping at it anyway like that. So not critical on the clutch pedal. We'll go over to the throttle. You can see I have a dead zone down here. Nothing's happening in the throttle until I put some pressure on it, which is actually not bad. Because I'm just resting my foot on it. That's typically how I'll do my throttle pedals. I'm just going to rest my foot on it. And you can see how much is showing there. So what I want to do 
is I'm going to raise this line so my pedals, when I'm, my foot rather is resting on the pedal, it doesn't activate the throttle. So that's about it right there. If I'm just resting my foot on there, and then once I go past the line, it'll come up. Because everybody rests their foot on the throttle, I believe, when you're going into turns and things like that. Okay. So now I'm going to go do the same thing I did on the clutch and get my dead zone up here, all the way at the top. And then when I engage it, it hits the purple line directly. So yeah, this is a, I have it kind of light on the pedal. In fact, I might tension, preload that tension up a little bit on that. Feels a little light, so I might come back and change that. In fact, I will. Anytime you change the settings on the brake pedal, clutch, or throttle, you need to come back and redo this because it's going to change the way the sensors are reacting. So I'm going to leave it there for now. But I'm going to probably put a little more preload on that. It's a little, I don't know. We just have to wait. I'm going to do some laps. Then we'll determine. So right here at the brake, you can see this all the way at the bottom here. I got a lot of space here for the dead zone. And again, I'm just going to rest my foot on the brake. If it's going down straight, so I'll do that. And yeah, it's not moving much. So I can bring that down a bit. Right about there. So the brake is just blinking there. I'm going to get just a hair higher than that. With my foot on the brake pedal, leaning on it. Very sensitive, these sensors, yeah. Well, if I can get it to come up again. Come on. Yeah. Got to highlight the line before it'll move. How about there? My foot's resting on it. Yeah. I'm comfortable with that. Because when you're going down the streets again, you don't want to be activating your brake pedal. So now I'll push it like I normally would. And you can see I got a little, I'm not coming up like halfway. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to bring that down a bit. Let's take it down to here. Let's see where I am now. Yeah, see, it goes all the way up on the right side now because I'm hitting the final braking point there. This feels pretty good to me as far as how much pressure I would ever be putting on the pedal. So I'm going to leave it there. That should do it. In fact, I probably won't even put that much pressure. But I don't want it to max the pressure out. So Because if you go, if you're pressing hard on the brake pedals in a deep braking zone and you hit the pedal hard, if you go over that top dead zone line there, you're going to lock up your brakes. And you don't want that. You want it to be right on the threshold of locking up your brakes when you're hard on the brakes. So I'm about there right now but again we can mess with it a little bit when we're in the car once we've adjusted this so that's how i would adjust mine i'm going to go over here and clutch pedals engaged by the way i meant to show you this down here it says clutch pedal that's automatically on because the board sensed that i had a clutch pedal plugged into the controller board so that's why you see it highlighted now you could i could take this off and you watch it, it just goes away it says oh the sensor's not here anymore even though it is I'll turn it on, and it'll come back. And hopefully that didn't change anything for the clutch. No, we're good. All right. So then, you don't have to save it, but I am going to save it. And it saves it to a default applicate, uh, rather a folder, where the application was started from. So remember that. And I'll just put this as number one. With a little mark on it. I didn't want to do all that. Go back. Okay, number one. Save it. Take a quick look at the shaping. These are different profiles we can use. One, two, and three. And you can see one's pretty crazy right there. You have presets over here, which is linear. A reverse curve, a top curve, an S. A less of an S. And a backwards linear curve. So this is where you can do these kind of presets if you want. Or you can go in and create a profile. Let's say I want to create this profile like this. And I can change the curve by dragging these little dots down. Like that. So you have a facility to do this. I do not do this. I don't use curves or anything on my throttle or my clutch or my brake, especially not on my brake because I want a linear. I know a lot of guys like to mess around with that stuff, but my personal take on this is that if you have to use a piece of software to induce curves in your pedal actuations, then obviously go ahead and do it if it makes you faster and it's easier for you to do it that way but in the long run you're not doing yourself any favors because it's better to 
use your feet to induce these curves, not a piece of software. It's going to teach you a lot more about car control at the end of the day. But then again, that's just my opinion on the matter. <laughs> All right, so there's the app, and we'll get on to the next segment now. We're at Sebring in iRacing, and we're in the Lotus 79 for some heel and toe shifting, which I don't think the throttle pedal was really initially designed for this, but it was adaptable. And that's the pretty much the theme for these pedals. It's very adaptable because they have so many adjustments in it. So all I did was raise that heel plate where it's supposed to be on the bottom there, and you can see where my heel is swinging over and catching it right on target. And that was kind of nice. Actually, I kind of like this because normally it's just a flat pedal or some other kind of pedal shape, and you have to adapt your foot to get your heel over there and slap it however you can. This actually allowed me to dial it in to perfect target every time, which allowed me to stay on the brake pedal a little better than I normally can because I'm swinging over and trying to make adjustments so I can get the throttle to blip for me while I'm doing the downshifts. Now, of course, that shouldn't be any surprise because there's just a ton of adjustability in these pedals. Now, the brake pedal. When I was using the brake pedal, I was able to get it dialed in with the preload and the springs up there so that it felt pretty good to me. I was able to do my threshold braking and trail braking quite efficiently. It didn't take me long to adapt to the pedal they have here. And I think, again, that lends itself to the, the design of it. If I had anything to say about the brake pedal, it would be that I had to keep fiddling with the face of the pedal. It just didn't feel right to me underfoot when I was using it, so I moved it around quite a lot, actually. And I finally found a spot that, that I liked. And again, that's what's nice about this setup, because you can adjust that pedal face in all kinds of directions. So I finally got it to where I felt more comfortable so I could be more consistent with that pedal. And of course, being a load cell pedal, you're going to be more consistent anyway than something like a a potentiometer, you know, the, the cheapy pots that you find on some of the lower grade pedal sets. So the clutch, again, as I said, when I was on the bench, once you're stabbing away at the clutch, it kind of disappears on you when you're doing this, because I'm just over there whacking as fast as I can to try to get the gears to change as quickly as I can get them to change. So yeah, that pressure plate feeling that I had on the bench just disappeared. It just wasn't there anymore, but it was a very solid pedal underfoot as I was slapping on it. And that's the theme also with these pedals, as you might guess from the construction of four millimeter plates that form the lever and then three millimeter stainless steel plates everywhere else. Yeah, it's, it's a tough set of pedals. And you can see here, I'm just hammering on them and I, they felt good under foot, but you know, it takes a heavy big pedal to feel good like that when you're slamming them around. So of course we had to go over to the ring and do some running in the two pedal setup where you're just doing left foot braking and then we're going to be doing right foot obviously with the throttle and you can see here on the throttle if you notice the difference I've dropped the heel support back down to where it's supposed to be and now I'm just kind of rotating my throttle foot and the thing that I noticed about this when I was watching the video is I'm pivoting my ankle a lot more and not pushing my leg forward than I would on a, on a normal kind of setup on pedals here you're just really just rocking or pivoting your ankle most of the time as you can see now i am lifting my foot off because i don't want to put pressure on the throttle that's a habit of mine and that's the only way i can make sure that i don't have any pressure on the throttle when i'm in heavy braking so you'll see my foot lift off a little bit but yeah it's not a strange feeling i was kind of wondering about that i'm sure a lot of people are when they first see these pedals wow this looks like a crazy set of pedals but once you get them under your foot you can adjust them to where you think you like them. And again, a lot of adjustability. You can dial these things in just about anywhere. So I found something I was comfortable with on the throttle. It gave me a sense of more control with the throttle because I was just pivoting my ankle for the most part, not pushing my pedal forwards that I usually do when I'm doing throttle. Sure, I'm pivoting my, my toe, my foot forward, and I am pivoting at the ankle, but I'm also pushing forward with my leg a little bit. Here, it kind of keeps you from doing that because you have that heel support, the bottom stainless steel plate that's picking up your heel as you're rocking forward. So it's really more of a pivot motion. It's just hard to explain. It's something you have to do for yourself, but it wasn't alien to me. I picked up on it really quickly and it just felt different, I guess is the best word to use here. And yeah, I was able to adapt. The ergonomics really worked out on this. Again, I had my concerns when I was first looking at this pedal set of just, you know, how is it going to feel when you're actually using them?
but I can say that, yeah, it's, it's easy to adapt. Really didn't take any effort and your foot just fits right in there and it's just your ankles pivoting and off you go. It gave me a more I don't know, feeling of confidence in my throttle, but it did not improve my lap times. <laughs> so it just made me feel more comfortable maybe in the corner exits in that portion of the corner when I was applying the throttle because I was just rotating my foot. It just felt like I had more control, but it, in the end, the results didn't pan out as far as you know my lap times coming down or anything like that. So yeah, I think that'll do it for the driving segment. So I'll let this lap run out for those of you who want to watch. And for those of you who don't, I'll see you over in the final thoughts.
Final thoughts on the R7 pedals from SimGrade. Out of the box, these pedals have a look and feel of a top tier pedal set. They have some heft to them. The brake pedal comes in at over 7 pounds or 3.2 kilos. They are constructed from 4mm and 3mm stainless steel plates. There is a noticeable absence of plastic here, which I consider to be a good thing. One of the first things you notice about these pedals is the different take the engineers have used in an effort to enhance pedal ergonomics. In addition to the usual pedal face design, they incorporate a two-piece heel support feature, with the heel rest actually moving with the pedal lever when actioned. In use, it induces more of a pivot motion along the angle area, where normally the angle tends to pivot less and move forward when using a pedal. I found this action gave me a sense of having a bit more control or accuracy than when pushing on a normal pedal setup. However, when looking at my comparable lap times, it did not improve upon them. Still, it did give me a bit more confidence on corner exits when modulating the throttle. Of course, this feeling is very subjective, and others may not feel what I did. All the pedals use Mavin load cells to transmit pressure data, with the brake pedal sporting a 200 kilogram unit. Maximum available foot pressure for the brake pedal is stated to be 120 kilograms. There are a lot of adjustments available on these pedals, allowing the user to dial in their preferences to the millimeter. The brake pedal has three default configurations, road car, GT, and F1, with an elastomer selection that you can mix or match. Changing out the elastomers and supporting washers can be a bit fiddly. And the same goes for setting the preload for the elastomer stack, which requires switching out spacers, washers, and maybe a different bolt length. Once I had done it a couple of times, it did become easier. And the included manual clearly explains the process. Speaking of which, SimGrade has produced what I would consider to be a very good manual for this pedal set, something that is sorely lacking in many of the pedal sets I have reviewed in the past. I was able to get some heel and toe driving in with the R7s, even though I don't think the engineers had this in mind when creating them, which again speaks to the amount of adjustabilities these pedals bring to the table. The controller box looks to be a 3D printed unit. Inside, we found a very professional looking and well laid out circuit board, keeping in line with the overall construct level of this heavy pedal set. My overall experience driving these pedals was very positive. Having the heel plate move with the pedal lever was something I got used to quickly. To me, it felt different. <laughs> not really any better than the pedals I drive with, but certainly not any worse either, as my usual lap times proved. They certainly belong with the other top tier pedal sets I have tested to date, considering their build quality and the materials used. Just a really heavy duty set of pedals that should stand the test of time. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.